the Greens recognize that cost of living relief is so desperately needed, and that's why we are supporting this bill. Unfortunately, though, despite the fuss and despite the dramatic resummoning of Parliament, under Labour's plan, energy bills will still keep rising, albeit a little bit less than they would have otherwise. The government's own numbers illustrate that their plan is an inadequate solution. Without the plan, Treasury had forecast electricity bills will rise next financial year by 36%. As a result of the legislation we are debating today, the increase next year will still be 23%, <coughs> and a combined increase of 47% over the next two years. So of course, this scheme, this plan, this legislation is not enough, and there is much, much more to do. This legislation did, though, present the government with a really good opportunity to freeze power bills, which at the moment they have missed. The government should really listen to the Greens and freeze power bills for two years, and we will keep pushing for this freeze so people can have much more meaningful cost of living relief. To, to provide further and more long-term cost of living relief and to move away from dirty and expensive gas, the Greens have secured a substantial package with the government that will help households and businesses to switch from gas to cleaner and cheaper energy. And as part of this package, the government will focus on low and middle income earners, renters and those in public housing. And this is, this is definitely a win for households and also a win for the climate. And it is a big blow for greedy gas corporations. I want to be crystal clear that we will not support a single cent of so-called compensation for coal corporations. Coal and gas corporations should, in fact, be compensating us for the massive climate damage that they have done, which is cooking the planet, not the other way around. Governments should not be propping up coal and gas with public money. We should be ending it. Projects like the Pilliga Narrabri gas project in New South Wales and the Beetaloo Basin project in the Northern Territory are climate crimes just waiting to happen. They must be scrapped. They destroy sovereign lands and forests while polluting water and air. The Labour government really needs to show the leadership and courage that is needed to deliver the big, bold solutions that this energy price crisis demands. Because the reality is this. This isn't a short-term dilemma sparked by the war in Ukraine. This is a crisis caused by neoliberal policy per perpetuated by both the major parties at a state and a federal level over the past 30 years and fueled by the greed of profit-bloated, morally bankrupt fossil fuel corporations. Major parties take dirty donations, then give these corporations criminally cheap access to our publicly owned resources. Some of these corporations pay no royalties or tax, and then they get billions in subsidies handed to them in a platter. Meanwhile, these corporations, whose business model has been to fuel climate change denialism, purchase favorable government policy, and profit of climate catastrophe have been raking in record profits. Research shows that the gas sector has accrued a staggering $26 billion in profit due to, Ukra due to the Ukraine war fueled price rises. That is absolutely disgraceful. We what we need urgently, what we need urgently is a windfall profit tax to rein these corporations in. This should not be controversial. Even the conservative UK government has introduced a windfall tax to fund cost of living relief. So what's stopping our Senator allegedly Canavan. progressive Labour government? I interjections from are disorderly. Sorry, Senator Faroki, can you just resume your seat for a minute? Senator Canavan. Senator Canavan, interruptions are disorderly. Please listen quietly. Thank you, Senator Faroki. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. A windfall profit tax should not be controversial. Even the Conservative UK government has introduced a windfall tax to fund cost of living relief. So what's stopping our allegedly progressive Labour government 
from doing what Nobel Prize winning economist Joseph Stiglitz has called a no-brainer. It is a no-brainer. This government, like the last one, is beholden to fossil fuel and energy companies. It should be the other way around. Privatization of our electricity and energy grid has been disastrous, not just for affordability, but for the pace of the clean energy transition. We must bring our resources and energy assets back into public hands. Essential services, whether they be education, health, or energy, should never be run for profit, and private companies should never have the power to hold us to ransom like they have. Coal and gas corporations exist for one thing, for making profit from environmental exploitation and destruction. Their greed and appetite for resources is insatiable. They are killing the planet. So the solution isn't treating these corporations as good faith players who deserve compensation. The solution is recognizing that they have long ago forfeited their social license to exist at all. So yes, the Greens will leave no stone unturned to end coal and gas. So our planet and all who live on it actually can have a future.